Hey everybody, this is The Recap Room and this is Relationship Rhetoric. I'm your host, Crystal Jordan, and you guys know I'm a little bit of a dating reality show addict. I watch Ready to Love every single season, Atlanta, Houston, DC, Miami, I'm there. Put a ring on it every season. Married at First Sight is my absolute favorite. The Bachelor, The Bachelorette, Farmer Wants a Wife, Queen's Court. There's so many dating reality TV shows and very few people actually make it to the next level. Now there are some of my favorite couples like Clifton and Joy, Woody and Abani are my favorite from Married at First Sight, but actually the numbers are not very good. Most couples that go that find each other on dating reality shows don't make it past the next season of that show. So I'm wondering why. I think there's a huge difference between the way women and men date. So I asked my man, Vigilante, to come hang out with me today and ask him why does he think dating relationships don't work on reality TV? Let's check it out. All right, so this is Crystal with The Recap Room, and I'm here with my man, Vigilante, yes, right? Yes, And we've been talking about dating shows and TV, reality shows, and why reality dating shows don't seem to work. Mm -hmm. Like, I guess it started years ago with, like, Flavor of Love. Oh, and yeah, you could be back with that one. <laughs> Um, the Bachelor. I mean, The Bachelor is still going on. It's probably like 20 seasons at this point. Oh, Jesus Christ. <laughs> there's Ready to Love. There's mm -hmm. Love is Blind. Yeah. There's Married at First Sight. Yeah. There's The Queen's Court. Yeah. All these dating shows where women come on, men come on, and there's The Bachelor and The Bachelorette. People come, singles come, and there's like a very small percentage of people that work. So my question to you, I'm going to tell you what I think. Mm -hmm. I don't think that men come onto these shows. I think men take themselves, uh, don't take themselves as seriously as women. Mm -hmm. I don't think men are sitting around romanticizing about falling in love on a dating show. Right? Mm -hmm. So I don't think that men are signing up for The Bachelor or signing up for Ready to Love or signing up for Love is Blind, really believing they're going to fall in love. I think if they fall in love, it's, a, it's by accident, right? Because they're just thinking, hey, it's going to be a lot of beautiful women. What do I have to lose? Women, I think there are two types of women. I think there's some women that are looking for a good opportunity. Mm -hmm. But then I do think there are some women that are really thinking, what if I go and find the man of my dreams and fall in love mm -hmm. and everything works out? I do think that women have a more romanticized idea of the possibility of love and men have a more rational way of looking at it. So that I, the, to think that I could go on TV and find someone and fall in love in six weeks just doesn't seem like something most men, to me, are really banking on. What do you think? Okay, so based off of everything that you just said, that literally showcases the difference between dating and men and women. Mm -hmm. So let's start with the women. You said um, one, one side is opportunity, other side is to find love. Mm -hmm. So honestly, really it's pretty much the same thing because you're not going to find love with somebody that you don't see the opportunity of you guys having a good future with. The way that men date is when you put a bunch of women in a room or a circumference, we have to figure out who do we like, who likes us, and what that energy is between the two and what the contrast is. Okay. How many of us, like, because women can date as men, not, not, they have more options. Okay. The average woman can have the option of every man that's in the room. She knows that. So she wants to hurry up and eliminate that. Okay. As a man, they we don't have as many options. It's going to get cut quick. Right. And so you we don't want to hurry up and eliminate that. So you don't want to <laughs> hurry up and eliminate them because you're shooting yourself in the foot. Because the one that you might that might like you, if you eliminate her and you end up with the one that you like, now you're stuck trying. To, it's an uphill fight from that point. Mm. So what it is is from what I'm seeing is that we're you're from what you name we're literally getting to see the way that both genders date differently, and then when it comes to romance. Women are usually run off of emotion, aesthetics, imaginary depiction, and narrative. And because that's the case, you see a lot of the fantasizing about where romance is. Romance isn't even a real thing. It's an idea. <laughs> and because of that idea, they automatically want men to get it. What do you mean it's not a real thing? Because it's, what, what is romance? Okay, so if a guy takes you on a, 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 a beautiful dinner, mm -hmm. right, brings roses or, you know, has, takes you on a trip where you're on the beach and mm -hmm. there's a, I mean, there, that's to me that yeah. romance is when a woman's, when her, when she's being catered to, mm -hmm. um, you know, during the date, the courtship process. How many women deserve that? 
we weren't talking about deserve, but I think if a man is interested, then that's what he should do to win the woman over. And that's and that right there is what I'm saying too. Deserve and win over are two things that are, that are simultaneous. Mm-hmm. Agree. The, the problem is that a lot of men give that to women who don't deserve it, and then when they receive it, then that's when you get videos like the one that went viral of "I want to be able to say that my husband bought me a house." As long as we, you know, continue this marriage. You have to get us a house. You have to buy us a house. I will have to buy it? Mm-hmm. So I can say my husband bought me a house. Just stepped on the buying, buying you a house. Us, wanna, us a house. Buy, you said you. You uh, said buy my wife a house. Yeah. This is, this is, this is who I am. <laughs> that was on Married at First Sight. Yeah. Now you see what I'm saying. That's the problem. If you're a guy that has enough money to where you can even do something like that, mm-hmm. you don't give it to a woman like that. Because the woman that you want won't even allow a statement like that to come out of her mouth because she's a helpmate. She won't, even if you say, baby, I want to do this and it just be me, she's going to be like, it's us. We in this together. She won't even allow something like that to happen. Because when we have a kid, that's us. When mm-hmm. we buy property, that's us. Everything that we do, if the cops come right now, it's us going <laughs> in. That's true. So she literally showed him on national television that I'm willing to leave you high and dry for an imaginary depiction of what I can say to people about my husband did this. That's the biggest red flag in the world. Wow. Okay. So it's going to be interesting to see if Shaquille, mm-hmm. the man in that clip, mm-hmm actually marries Oh, that's Kirsten. over with. It's over with? If you marry... Oh, man, I can't curse. You're so glad I can't. Oh, <laughs> man, you're, so, you're lucky I can't curse. If you marry her, you are the biggest simp in the world. You are a loser. Kevin Samuels is turning Wait a minute. Okay, wait a minute. Wait, Kevin... Okay, well, wait a minute. Let's leave... Let's let Kevin Samuels be okay. peaceful, okay? Let's leave him Shout out, out of this. Let's leave him out of this. But I'm saying, though, there, don't you think there's an idea of a man that want... Most... I think most men would want to provide... A man that has it would want to... It really don't have nothing to do with with having it or not. My mom bought her first house on sweat equity. Mm-hmm. So when when she broke down what sweat equity was to me, literally back in the day when men weren't wealthy and all they had was like their hands and tools mm-hmm. and stuff when we were in tribes, it was about who could build and who was a warrior and stuff right. like that. This all sweat equity. Mm-hmm. It wasn't about money. So now modern day, it's the same thing. I could be rich, but another person may know how to build. And then that may be the, con- the contribution that his wife loves that he has in the household. Mm-hmm. I think that has been jaded by the money because I can hire a builder. I agree. And then you. the aesthetics of a woman not wanting to be with somebody who's a builder, mm-hmm. the bus driver, instead of the guy that owns the bus. Say, here we go. <laughs> so that's where the, the, the skew comes in. Right. So provide is too umbrella of a word it's too it's too broad it's too broad of a word and it's it's i i personally don't like it when females say that to me it's a super red flag because i can provide for anybody so when you use the word provide you're already letting me know that you don't deserve for me to provide for you because if you deserve somebody to provide for you they would have been doing that already nobody's providing for you because they don't want to it's 7.7 trillion people in the world and nobody wants to provide for you and you're a woman you have breasts (laughs) As in vagina, and nobody wants to provide for you. That's, <laughs> Maybe that's she just wild. came out of a relationship. I mean, oh, this, no, this, no. wait, 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 wait. Because the girl, <laughs> the girl that we're talking about, Kirsten, she's mm-hmm. very beautiful, right? And there are a lot of men that are just into arm candy. You don't think so? You gotta take the glasses off for them. <laughs> I live in Atlanta, where the strippers and the librarians look exactly the same. Facts, facts. There is no such thing as beautiful anymore. They're all beautiful here. Mm-hmm. So a beautiful girl that is entitled is not a beautiful girl anymore. You're just an entitled pretty face. I can turn a seven into a 10 if I want to. <laughs> Why would I take that when I can just take this and make it better than that? If you marry this woman, you are the <laughs> biggest simp in the world. For the sake of you and your children in the future, this is only going to get worse. And the fact that she did this on TV means that she doesn't mind embarrassing her husband. Thanks. Okay, so in that okay, so that's going to be one more couple that doesn't work. Mm-hmm. Um, and, do you think? Why do you think men go on dating shows? Why do you think men sign up for shows like this? I think that it's, it has a lot to do with them being like you automatically secluded. 
Mm-hmm. It's kind of like I can't say that word, but when a when a dude be like, "Yo, where the girls at?" Mm-hmm. and then your friend be like, "Yo, I got twenty of them over there," and then he pull up over there instead of him going to find twenty for the whole day. Oh, they're brought to they're him. brought to you. Mm-hmm. You're paid to be on the show. You probably live better on the show than you do at home. Mm-hmm. Like me buying a penthouse is me living on a vacation at right. home. Right. Most people don't live that way. Right. So when they go somewhere, then that's a vacation for them. So right. they're going to take their free vacation with the women that are there already. That are being provided with for the them. food that's there. <laughs> with the nicest clothes that they don't probably get to wear on a regular basis. Right. Because they probably have like a job uniform. Mm-hmm. So they're, they're trying to live that life. They're trying to be the high value man. Right. For that time. That's why they go on the show. Wow. All right. Well, you guys heard that. All the ready to love fans out there. Married at first sight. Love is blind. You keep going. <laughs> <laughs> Queen's a Court. A lot of them. All of these shows being out here is super telling to what the dating market is and to what the lack of character that people have. All you got to do is just be yourself. My guy, go to work tomorrow and ask your boss for a raise. Go get your dream car. Go buy a nice house. You have all the women in the world to choose from. Women, reserve yourself. Preserve yourself. Fix your credit. Get you a raise at work, too, if you want to get a raise. Become that woman that you know is going to be a beautiful helpmate for your husband so y'all can go 50-50 with everything. And if he chooses to provide, then he provides. If he doesn't, then you have it. You have all of the selection, and you have nobody that can hang anything over your head because you are preserving yourself. Okay, so Vigilante broke it down for me. <laughs> I actually agree with most of the things that he had to say. I, I, I'm not mad at I'm not mad at that. I do think that men and women date differently, and I do think that he explained perfectly what we see happening on reality dating shows, and hopefully, things will get a little different as people start to take these shows a little seriously, or maybe they'll be able to weed out some of the extra, but at the end of the day, it's entertaining. And I think that people get a kick out of it. Now, I hope that Shaquille is tuned in to Vigilante's advice about his marriage to Kristen, but we'll see. We'll see what happens on the season finale of Married at First Sight. And I'll see you next time on Relationship Rhetoric right here at the Recap Room.